Welcome back to Cart Market's MMM coverage, where we watch Canister play modern in paper. We've got paper gameplay, and the two of us, a mythic champion and me just tagging along, uh, are gonna commentate that. Before we jump into the game, one more uh, you know reminder: if you're not subbed yet, please go down there and hit the subscribe button because it helps us show you know Cart Market and everyone else that you appreciate the content that, that it's worth to keep doing this. But with that out of the way, we'll go straight into the game. Yes. Yes. I participated. <laughs> All right, this round is also against Death Shadow. If you if you've watched round one, you will know. The creature, uh, but this time Elias is playing Demir Death Shadow and starting it off disruptively by fetching a watery grave, going on to 17, and then casting Inquisition of Kozile. Yeah, we said speed matters. Elias uh, kind of went the opposite way of removing all the red speed. So there's no Ragavan, no Death Shadow, and uh, no Dragon's Ray Chenyu, obviously, uh, and added more controlling elements, which is, I would say, problematic, at least. Um, kind of like the thing that turns it problematic is that there's still no way to interact with the lands, once again, right? Like, Well, it's not common to interact with lands that much, but specifically Cavern of Souls is a huge problem because you replace some stuff with Arc Mage's Charm, which also counters, which also really doesn't do anything against Cavern, which naturally Piotr here has played. And Elias also missing a second land, no spell to be cast. I can spot a drown in the lock. I can spot something that looks like brainstorm, but I'm almost it's oh, that's an Archmage's Archmage's charm. charm. Yeah. And uh, Piotr is just <laughs> going wild, ramping like crazy. Now has four mana in play on turn two, with an explorer still left in hand. Elias takes another draw. Um, I think the that was the yeah, at this point you hope, okay, maybe if my opponent doesn't have anything, which they is don't. the case. Yeah, they don't. But... As we know Canister, this is a Titan. Oh, look no. at the top of my library. What could that be? And it was... It was a Simic Growth Chamber. Oh, it was actually a blank. Without the Growth Chamber, that would have easily been a Titan, one way or the other, either with Castle Garen Brig... Big... Brig? Brig? Any, anyways. Uh, or just, you know, two land drops off the Dryad. Yeah, now you can just play your lands. You have a huge advantage by opponent not doing anything, but that could actually just go away, depending on Elias' hands, what is containing when you play the second land, and that's a second land. All right, down to 10. Oh, that's a fetch land. I thought that was a shock land. All the alternate artworks got me confused. That's obviously a flooded strand. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> So now, keeping, keeping a one-lander, you usually have a bunch of powerful spells to back that up, because otherwise you would just mulligan. So I assume this is where Elias' hand kind of unlocks, but we only see a Death Shadow, so a lot of Canister's draws are live right now. If, if there's, you know, a Titan, if there is a Summoner's Pact, stuff like that. Stubborn Denial doesn't even have um, Ferocious yet, so it doesn't hard counter, it's only a force spike, as we see Elias pick one up. Seven and I, wow, what a coincidence. And... You also have to have a yeah four power creature, which is not that untrivial in the deck. Yeah, like you have to go down to nine and have a death shadow. And currently Elias still sitting at 10, so I don't think there's any kind of disruption that Elias has for a Titan, but then again, Canister also just doesn't have a Titan. This is sad. It's like my limited deck would beat this. Oh, <laughs> oh no. and Drown in the Lock, targeting in the Borrow of Grace. Uh, if I was Canister, I would be suspicious of another Drown in the Lock. Could you uh, just count the uh, Amulet? Yep. I, I don't want to put like priorities on opponent's cards, but yeah. one of them the deck is named <laughs> after, and <laughs> the other one is an 03 Ape. I, I Disclaimer, still, we still didn't figure out if it's an ape. <laughs> Ever since the last video, we still didn't figure out whether it was an ape. 
And now this is the kind of pressure that Elias needs to put on during the game to, you know, beat the amulet deck. So I think uh, Canister has like one to two draws remaining here, right? Depending on what the draws are. Oh, oh delivered. However, there's yeah, the stubborn denial. That's the problematic part. Actually, the summoner's pack doesn't do it as this is counterable. You cannot pay mana from your cabinet of salts in multiple ways to make this uncounterable. Yeah. Maybe, I think uh, I was a little too quick, but that's also a, very deep. Maybe you actually do want to kill the grazer as it has reach and blocks one more time the regent. Hmm. Which seems bold. But also um, very smart. I, I'm not sure about the player's hand at that point because if you if you have the regent already in hand, yeah, well, it was already in hand. Then it turns on your stubborn denial, uh, which shuts off a lot of. Uh, maybe that was just a very heads up play. Great stuff. Yeah, but you can say like your opponent is obviously empty. They drew the amulet. There's nothing that works with it. Oh, is that lethal? Eight, five, six, no. Pietro down to four, I think. Um, Street Wraith. Street Wraith, That's so down, going to, down two. to two. <gasps> Dismember, uh, but Dismember doesn't do it. No, because he killed the Dryad. Yeah. Oh, if he would have drawn before. Yeah, cycling Street Wraith before would have uh, led to lethal, but as it stands, Canister misses his draw and is now down 1-0 against Elias. So heading into game two, um, Elias probably wants to, you know, be, be kind of ideally a bit more aggressive, but I don't think his sideboard really delivers on that. No, no, you can have some more controlling elements. Chalice for zero works, Explosive for one. You could board more dress downs. They're in Dotty White Walker, which I don't see really. I mean, they do attack, so that's they, a thing. They do attack, but they don't steal anything great. Well, they steal stuff that goes touches the graveyard. Yeah, but what are you realistically stealing? Oh no, they're not great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elias starting off on a street wraith uh, into a flooded strand, so realistically down to 15 if he so chooses. Uh, I see another watery grave in hand, so down to 13, which is exactly one off of deploying Death Shadow. I also see a Murktide Regent alongside the dress down. So once again, a bit reactive, it looks like. And this is not your dream setup where you just pass turn two. Yeah. Oh, and, and Canister Ooh. Uh, playing a bounce set and bouncing the bounce set itself. Uh, very necessary when you have multiple amulets, but no follow up bounce lands because amulets work really well with bounce lands, but they don't really work well with untapped lands. So yeah, and uh, you have to remain with one bounce line in your hand. Yeah. Um, I think there is another untapped land in Canister's hand, but he chose, oh, maybe there isn't. Either way, he chose to uh, deploy Relic and Amulet. Relic obviously very nice at keeping the graveyard clean against, uh, yeah, I mean, making Murktide Regent basically uncastable for the near future. And yes, picking up a pool of Delta is Nice in theory, as it allows the Death Shadow to come down. So it's also nice in practice. It is. Uh, I mean, in practice, Elias doesn't seem to have a Death Shadow in hand. But, you know, gives the ability to. Yeah, that hand looks... There's a counter spell. Like, yeah, once again, it's super reactive. Um, obviously, Piotr will be expecting counter spells out of a blue-black deck that just passes the turn, right? So I assume if he does have an opportunity to somehow get a Cavern of Souls into play, he will take that opportunity. All right, that's but right now mana. he's only floating four mana. What are we the four? Summoner's Pact, Titan, Endurance. Endurance. Is that a hard cast? <laughs> it's just kidding. That's wild. <laughs> ah, too Man, strong. It gets countered though. No reason that is this actually the most expensive card in Magic Online. Endurance? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wild. Luckily, we're no, not. No, that's modern. Yeah, it is modern. <laughs> we're also not playing Hearthstone. 
<laughs> Wait, what? What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, no. Endurance is is a new tech. So, Just running it out, putting the pressure. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, we saw the summoners packed in Piotr's hand. Obviously, even if he created six mana, it would be really risky to run that out because you don't have four mana in play during your upkeep usually when you bounce your bounce lands. Uh, but Piotr also not able to get to that crucial six mana mark that marks the Titan approaching, just sitting on five. Obviously, Piotr's hand can be fairly explosive. Like if, if he draws any explore that generates some mana, um, a dried of the Essen Grove generates one mana, if, if I'm correct. So in theory, if Elias didn't have any counter spells in hand, there was a way to deploy the Titan last turn by fetching Dried of the Elson Grove, casting it, and then generating the sixth mana for the Titan, but the canister wisely not going for that line, as it would leave you blank to counter spells, removal spells, dress down, stuff like that. Picking up a Valakut and a Forest. Now some much needed lands. Yeah. Once you get to six mana, on your own, which is as soon as next turn, you can at least try to cast the Titan. So, oh yeah, never mind. I thought there was a Dryad in Piotr's hand, but there isn't. There's only a Summoner's Pact. Question is, are you going for it? All right, I mean, now you're just going for the first Titan, right? Yeah. I mean, you have two Titans in hand. You, you probably can't afford to wait that much longer for the Cavern of Souls, but oh my God, the work. Never mind, he's not going for it. He's just, he's just playing the slow game making his land drops, ramping up. The work that that Relic of Progenitus has put in was big. Like, imagine in a world where that Relic wasn't in play, the um, Merktide Regent would have easily like come down by now and would have pressured Canister maybe to even to a point where we, he would have to go for an early Titan. Another uh, Ebusteju would open up another turn of draw go for a canister, and that's exactly what he's going for. Basically saying, I'm gonna make progress on my board state, how about you? Ooh, that's good. Thoughtseize gives you at least a glimpse at what's possibly going on. We see two Titan in a pact. So now you can kinda work around that yeah now you know what you're up against that and you can you know find a plan to fight it now um, technically you can double spell by fetching the dryad and then threatening titan and dryad is actually quite dangerous yeah. as valakut is getting closer and closer to dealing the damage then again you don't know what kind of interaction elias has in his hand no but you can't do much better than double spelling True. Maybe Elias has like Drown and Archmage's Charm and those can't be cast together. Hmm. There are certainly scenarios where double spelling gets you to resolve a spell where single spelling doesn't. And this is four mana floated and a Gruel Turf returned to hand. So now there's one mana floating after casting the Dryad. Well, look at that. You don't even need the Pact. Yeah, Piotr just ripping them off the top of his library like they are, I don't know. I don't know of any good comparison of ripping things off the top of your library. Like they're books stacked on top of your library. They're like those shirts from Coca-Cola commercials. <laughs> because you <laughs> rip them off? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Dry Resolving gives Piotr one additional mana in theory. I mean, in practice it's four additional mana, but three of and more spent on the drive. You get what I mean? So now there's two floating mana. Um, I mean, never mind. Five floating mana, I'm sorry, I'm stumbling all over my words. Five floating mana uh, accompanied by the four untapped lands on Canister's side. It's like bandages for my mom when I was like 10. She just ripped them off. It hurt a lot. <laughs> Top <was> still <laughs> worth <laughs> ripping things off. As Canister is granting the Dryad haste, leaving um, four floating mana, which is now gone because Piotr has changed the phase. Elias down to three. 
I like it. <laughs> I like the aggressiveness with the drive. You know, just saying. Three is just one trigger away. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Elias now cycling the dress down. Cycling the dress down before the Dryad entered the battlefield would have prevented the second land drop. And dress down, of course, enabling Fatal Push to take out the Dryad. Needed action, playing dress down before end of turn, then it leaving end of turn, creating you a revolt. And that means you can actually kill it. Pretty neat. And um, also that sequence of plays puts two additional cards into Elias's graveyard. Fetching now kind of becomes dangerous because suddenly another Dryad kills you. Um, but it also crucially puts another card into Elias's graveyard. Yeah. So now Murktad Regent discounted by four. Another Dryad that can gain haste, right? Because there's still the battlements on the battlefield. Yeah. Alright, Regent. Regent discounted by four, three mana. I think that's a 5-5 five, five flyer. Fatal Push and Thoughtseize got exiled, they did. So now it's on Canister to find a solution. And without a Cavern of Souls, that solution, yeah, it's gonna be tricky. I mean, there's still that counter spell in Ilias's hand and Canister getting through that won't be easy. Obviously, the turns of uh, draw, land drop, go are behind us because now there is a 5-5 flyer on the board that Canister can no longer ignore for long. So now it's time to pull the trigger on some action. Interestingly enough, Canister leaving uh, Bosejo untapped rather than Valakut. You would expect the red mana to remain untapped, but... I'm sure there's a plan behind that. I think it's more of a thing like if that makes your decision to not counter my Titan, then I think we're fine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Also a little fake if you somehow end up with a dried and play, the land can still produce red. Ooh, Inquisition. Inquisition is very big. Big because it takes the pact. Yeah. Taking the pact, like you would think that Pact and Titans are equivalent, but they're not. And now Canister has to make the decision of, do I cast that Pact now? Do I yeah. have to? Because if I cast it now, I'm out of mana next turn, but also it doesn't get taken by the Inquisition. We'll see how he decides. Um, do you know the other contents of Canister's hand? Mm, no, the Bounce Land we know of. Yeah. And I think another Titan, right? Ooh. All right. Oh wow, well that is the best case. Yeah, that's that's a two for yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that's the best case. That's a two for one and you don't even need to pay for your Bold pack. Bold thing to play the pack actually, because that guarantees that you can't play the Titan next yeah. turn. And I think that was exactly the decision that Piotr has to make. Do was I... that a bait for, for the drone? Was it that ele like elaborated? Yeah, no, but the drown, the drown doesn't do anything else. No, it? I know, but like if if you know your opponent has drown, you cast it hundred percent of the time, right? Mm. So this is a given, because otherwise it just gets discarded. All right, so now. Oh, and now now actually the yeah the titan is gonna be protected. Elias knows that uncounterable titan is coming, giving Valakut a read right now. Valakut mighty useless, but as soon as Dried of the Ilsen Grove comes into play, mighty useful. But is Titan actually going to save the, the day here? Uh, I guess we'll have to find out because that is a lot of flying pressure coming Piotr's way next turn. Because not only does this Murktad region um, enter as a 4-4, 3 something like that. Also, the other Murktad region grows along with it up to an 8-8. Eight, eight. Never mind, that's a 6-6 six, six yeah. Murktad region. Wow. And now all of a sudden the thousand the Tuzzle. The Titan doesn't deal damage, right? Yeah, 14. But Titan. you can... I mean, you can get Tolarian. No, but you don't get additional triggers. Well, you can untap your stuff, right? You can still yeah. Tolarian Academy into something else. So You mean Tolaria West? Tolaria West, yeah. Tolaria West into Summoner's Pact, into Dried of the Elsen Growth, maybe? Yeah, but then you still need to attack. But you can. You have Valakut plus Hanwar Battlements. Untapped? Not sure. I'm not certain. So the bounce then creates four mana. So then the six is the Titan. The Titan puts into play the two lands, which make you create six. 
you cycle blah yeah you do actually have two mana over that loses against any form oh okay that's just plus two mana great okay, right? yep that's actually plus infinite mana if that uh, was what, a what was the pickup i think it was a titan and an amulet an amulet oh yeah that's a bunch of mana which you can't actually play now because yeah, you... because then your utility lands are used up, but you can still deploy it before the. No, I know uh, it's a, it's not an emulator. It's the expedition map. Well, it's in. It doesn't matter. All right. So we're gonna have cruel turf. That's four mana. Four mana, and mm -hmm. then we do it again. That's eight mana. One land drop remaining. Depending on if it's played or not. Oh, picking up a seju. Interesting. Why Poseidon? So, uh, depending on what canister communicated here, he either has um, no mana floating or four mana floating because there was an explorer played. So, in theory, he could have played Gruel Turf twice. There's no real need to actually cast it, like to play the yeah. turf twice. You can just float the land drop. I'm not quite sure why it would return to Bozeju, but maybe we'll figure that out. I mean, I, like, I'm certain it's for dress down. Like, he's afraid of dress down. You can also protect from dress down on one. Yeah, yeah. But that means you actually have to have the Gortov enter twice to also have the mana from that. Yeah. So we're almost certain there's four mana floating. <laughs> All right. So that's going to make it six mana. Uh, seven, right? Dung dung, six. No, seven. Tolaria West creates one and Growth Chamber creates two? Yeah, and this twice. Oh, in addition to the four, so that's ten in total. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so, so there was a land right drop. Now there's okay, there was a land drop missing. Now there's ten mana. Wait, but why then pick up Boseju if you don't have the mana floating? Well, you can still do the dress down after, but you still don't get to land the lands by the Titan. Yeah, I think... Playing Gruel Turf before that would have been better to... Either way, now we're gonna get I lost the track packed. of mana, by the way. <laughs> no, it's fine. Ch now we get Pact. Pact, we get Dryad. Dryad, and then we gain we haste, haste with the Titan. Haste with the Titan, get another Valakut, and then... That sh oh, I, Elias is on two! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what yeah. am I talking about? Any this... Valakut trigger just does it. Yeah. Any land entering the battlefield here while the Dryad is in play does it. So... This is just a game, so we will be seeing in game three here. Yeah, we know there's nothing that can actually kill the Titan. Like, there's no... Uh, Terminate, <laughs> like in the last game. That yeah, last like, match. what is the thing that kills non-dragons? Powered kill, for example, right? Cast down, stuff yeah, like that. Same thing. No Doomblade. All right, uh, that's the Dryad, and... Oh, we could also just play Busejo <laughs> for the trigger. For the trigger. Oh, don't, so, no, yeah. don't play Busejo. Don't do not do it, Canister, because that still loses to Dress Down. Because if you play it, your opponent dresses down um, the Dryad, then suddenly the Valakut trigger on check doesn't realize that there's a bunch of mountains. Very smart. You could have cast Expedition Map and cracked it. Whatever, there's... Never mind, now we're playing Busejo. Three damage, and Ilyas goes to minus one. So that was game two. As you realized, this deck is a mess to commentate. Um, we are trying to guess lines here sometimes. It's not always easy. We don't know the entire context, but we're doing the best we can. As we move into game three, with yeah, both players on a mulligan. A lot of communications that we don't know. So it's, it's, it's like a box of candies. You, know? <laughs> you never know what's inside. Yeah, it's very good. Uh, all right, game three, Elias on the play, both on a mulligan to six. Oh, what a convenient amulet. A very convenient amulet. Uh, is, I see an Urza Saga, um, but I think Kanisher is not going with it for turn one this time. Actually, uh, if you play amulet from Zaga turn one, then you can do make, you can make the token. <laughs> you can, indeed. All right. Um, I like how the three life lands actually make a good difference. Yeah. Double blue. We see. What, what could that represent? Yeah. What card could double blue represent? It's a bit unfortunate. The tainted indulgence can't be cast. Yeah. 
But you have double counter spell? It looks like it. Yeah. All right, Urza Saga on turn two. Yeah, now you're a sad counter spell player. And an expedition map that. that would you counter that? Yeah, here? I mean, it gets uh, uh, the cavern, so. Okay, never mind. Elias opting not to counter, and Elias once again stuck on mana here, uh, not having anything to do. Tainted Indulgence, of course, a new addition from Streets of New Capanna. And Kennesert doesn't need the expedition map. No. He, he just draws the uh, Cavern of Souls all by himself. And now Elias finally off to the races by finding a black source. Going down to 14 in the process, so not ready to deploy Death Shadow just yet. And just passing the turn back, obviously having the black untapped source enabled Tainted Indulgence and having untapped, uh, two untapped lands on Canister's side enables a Construct token to come down. And we've seen the effectiveness of Beatdown in the last game, and now Canister's just taking it to the next level, not only starting the Beatdown when Elias is down to three life, but starting the Beatdown when Elias is still at 14 life. And as the Death Shadow deck, I mean, uh, both of us have played a bit of Death Shadow in Modern, um, it's sometimes an awkward dance between getting your life total low enough to deploy Death Shadow and keeping it high enough not to lose the game. <laughs> yeah, specifically against Burn. It's a very elegant dance of getting very powerful or very dead. Yeah, I, for me it was usually just a very scrambled me falling over and then, then pointing lightning bolts at me. Yeah. Do you know the... Indiana Jones scene where there's like the sword fighter who does like this cool tricks and then you just got shot. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like playing Death Shadow yeah, against okay. Burn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, as we see a construct heading into the red zone, it gets drowned in the lock, which of course it can always get because it has a converted mana cost of zero or rather a mana value of zero. Wow, what a boomer. What? No. Zoomer? I always. F and like one of the hip young kids saying mana value. But Juka Bog. Hmm? Go ahead. What you want to say? <laughs> but Juka Bog being picked up by Girl Turf is pretty great here. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say. This is one of the advantages of playing all of those lands just on their front level because you know that they're not gone. You can yeah. get them back. Yeah. Uh, we see a main phase tainted indulgence. Getting rid of Inquisition, all right. Finding a fourth land. Yeah, your discard spells don't shine if your opponent actually attacks you with constructs now. Yeah, it, they really don't. And the problematic part is like that expedition map actually represents another Oza Saga. Yeah, I mean, without doing any fancy combo shenanigans or anything, Kanisha can just crack the expedition map, get another Urza Saga and start slamming and jamming with more construct tokens next turn. As it stands, uh, Amulet is being deployed and now, yeah, once again, Elias in a tough spot of do you counterspell? Do you drown in the lock? Elias opting for counterspell here, being afraid of the construct token. Because usually counterspell is of course the better counterspell against stuff like Titan, although with the Cavern of Souls, not so much. Um, but drown in the lock, being able to take out the construct token uh, gets, gets kept in hand by Elias here. That's very unfortunate that you have to counter the amulet because that's not how you want to spend your mana. You really hope to get like a titan with it. Yeah. Also, you're, if you don't have pressure, your counter spells are really less effective. It's like, it's slowly or very quickly maneuvering into like a situation where it's, you kind of do the wrong things. And I like the a, decision of not attacking with the construct here. Oh, I see, to keep the death shadow in, uh, in not stubborn denial range, or just not growing the death shadow at all. Oh no, oh no! That's a bunch of lands and two titans, and Inquisition of course like does nothing against any of them. Street Wraith gets cycled in response, Canister activates the Relic of Progenitus, of course that is um, to activate the Relic while still something, anything is on the stack, because as soon as the stack is empty, Elias could immediately start delving for the Murktide region, without Piotr being able to react to that. Uh, we know that there's no Murktide in hand just yet, but Canister obviously doesn't know. 
Uh, as Elias makes his fifth land drop, dress down will be able to take down the construct token, but you're still facing down uh, an amulet opponent with like six cards in hand that can now get another Urza Saga or whatever they want. Um, with two Titans in hand, I'm not feeling too good if I'm in Elias' spot. Also, when we said that you can rebuy the Bajuka Buck once you played it, it obviously also means that every iteration of a bounce land leads to another trigger from the Bajuka Buck if you play it again. So yeah. you're not only playing one of those things, but once you have one, you play like 10. I mean, and the power of Exile in the Graveyard has really shown in game two. If it wasn't for the Relic of Progenitus, I'm almost certain that Canister would have lost game two, mm -hmm. but it delayed the Murktide region by so much in game two, and it would have delayed it here if Elias had it in hand, that, you know, that's, that's the power of handling the graveyard against the blue base decks. Kind of start playing Urza Saga, taking things, things slow, still opting not to attack with the Construct token. It's a little bit of an awkward timing for the Saga, which is kind of only telegraphing that you're only interested in the Amulet, because next turn you're going to cast a Titan. There's no, yeah. no question about it. It can't be countered. Why wouldn't you do it? And that means you can't do the token from level two, and probably also not from level three, because oh. why would you do that? I mean, you, you could, but yeah, having a Titan in play, there's probably something better oh, you can do. That dies, very good. Yeah, dress down, taking care of the token, cycling on the way. And then... Uh, the dress down should also go away. Uh, nope, I don't think... I, I think Elias played that at end of turn. Just very end of turn, okay. So now the Death Shadow is still a 13-13. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, no way uh, for Blue Black to grant Death Shadow haste here, but it is a 13 13. You, can ha you have bragging rights. As players, I think, are comparing life totals. So now Dress Down gets sacrificed at the end of Elias' turn. No longer is that Death Shadow a 13 13. Shrinks down to a mere 6 6. And once again, Canister has a decision to make. In your eyes, Toffel, it's an easy slam dunk titan. Let's see what Canister goes for. I mean, you play a titan, right? Worst thing that can happen is your opponent dresses down again. Then you have the luxurious situation of having a titan in play, hmm. which is, in my expert opinion, not that bad. That's a pretty expert opinion you have there, Toffel. All right, yeah, that's exactly what he does. Uh, Dressdown gets cast in response, and nothing else for the turn. So now Murktide Regent can come down, but as a mere 3-3 three, three flyer for five mana, it's not looking that impressive. Uh, the poor Drowning Locks really don't shine. And once the Titan gets going, it's not that much fun. I mean, next turn is going to be the second Titan. It's going to be multiple triggers. You get the amulet, so... Oh, yeah, right, of course. Uh, you, you even get the amulet off of Urza Saga. <laughs> Elias offering up the trade. It's a fair trade, right? A Titan versus a Death Shadow, but Canister saying, I think I'll pass, <laughs> which is a very reasonable decision, given that you can probably attack with the Titan next turn. You get the amulet. Um, you have to make another land drop to cast your second Titan, but that... I assume will be no problem. You could consider growing the Merc Tide one more by just playing Drown on anything, pretty much. Um, but doesn't Merc Tide cost seven? Yeah, then you have three cards in your graveyard. And three you, mana. Uh, you, have no, you have a land, right? Is that another land? I'm not sure. Maybe that's a dismember? The left card? Yeah. Oh, no, oh, no, it's a, it's counter, a counter spell. spell. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Elias sees that there's no way for him to beat double titan in addition to the amulet coming down from the Urza Saga next turn and scoops them up, which concludes round two. Um, I have to say, credit to Relic of Progenitus for winning that game two, because otherwise there would have been a game three. And once again, you know, less explosive stuff going on against these interactive decks and more kind of the land go scenario. That's crazy. 
what Saga allows those decks to do either on a very fast potent kill mechanism by getting Amulet, but also once you realize that your opponent is trying to react, having a lot of counter spells, having a lot of reactions, you just say like, you know what, I'm just gonna make tokens and yeah. then you have to deal with them. And what happens when those tokens are gone? We're just gonna do more tokens because in the end, you can also just loop them by getting Expedition Map from the Saga, getting another yeah, Saga. You have Bounce Lands, um, which can bounce them after creating the first token. Yep. Anyways, a bunch of shenanigans going on uh, in Canister's, Canister's Amulet Titan deck, but that does it for this video. For the next round, just you know, subscribe to the channel and you'll know when we upload the next game. See you then.